Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone, IPA officers, directors, my brothers and sister musicians here today, friends and families. It's my pleasure to join you and introduce this next Hall of Fame recipient, Peter J. Danielczyk. I've been a friend of Peter's for over half my life. I know Peter's passion for polka music. I first met Peter when I was performing with the late Polka Hall of Famer Ray Henry and his orchestra, and we immediately bonded. Over the last 34 years, I've witnessed Peter's accomplishments. Not only do I respect him, his passion for what he does for polka music, I respect him as a wonderful person with deep family and religious roots. Peter has been promoting polka music for 53 years. Peter started his polka celebration radio show in the 70s, and that continues today on terrestrial radio and the internet. And I must say, Peter's presentation, the content and how he does it, makes polka music proud, and that's what we need in our industry. In addition to radio and internet shows, Peter started his polka celebration TV show in 1992 on the Valley's cable network and it went to number one as the most watched television show on the network. Peter hosted some of the biggest polka dances in our state of Connecticut, and it was held at the large venue called Warsaw Park, and it was a pleasure for me to witness it because I performed like almost every one of those with some of the greats. Uh, Peter brought back a, a polka hall of famer, Gene Wisniewski, and his big band, Ray Henry and his big band, Jimmy Stir, and eventually the Maestro Spence. After the passing of our friend, Polka Hall of Famer, Ray Henry, we formed a committee. It, it consisted of some, some of the devotees of the late band leader. And it was through Peter's devotion and hard work that he achieved the fact that our state of Connecticut passed through the legislation naming the ballroom polka our official state polka and was signed by our governor, Malloy, making our state very proud. Peter, also promotes our beloved Polish heritage as a journalist. He publishes a regular polka celebration editorial in the monthly newspaper of the Polish Falcons, Sokol Polski. Peter has collaborated, as you heard, in lyric and songwriting with various bands. The Maestro's men had the pleasure of recording several, and as you heard Peter sang, Peter's written the liner notes for many bands and introductions. Peter hosted a lot of polka ceremonies and many festivals and award programs. And Peter served on the IPA 17 years uh, as an executive officer, and now he serves as trustee. Since the inception of the IPA benefit, which has held for the last 17 years in Ludlow, Massachusetts, I must say, when the Maestro's men show up every year and we are unloading, we're greeted by Smiling Peter, as he's always there to help with all the wonderful volunteers that make that event such a great success. Peter's passion for polkas is real, and it's from the heart. And Peter, throughout the years, has received many awards to date. The Frankie Yankovic Award by the PAC, the Joe Josiak Award by the IPA, he was inducted to the Broadcasting Hall of Fame. He received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the USPA. And he was deemed Connecticut's polka prince in multiple articles that appeared in publications, including the Hartford Current and the New York Times. However, Peter shared that so far, this is gonna be his greatest accomplishment. He's so proud of celebrating with you all today. I have a lot to say about Peter, but I want you to hear from him, okay? So it's my pleasure right now. Could you please give a warm round of applause to my friend, Peter J. Danielczyk. Thank you so much. I remember a few years back, I was MC of this event, and Leon Krasicki was still alive chairman, 
And we had one inductee, Teresa Sobolska, and she got up here and she talked for about an hour. <laughs> Leon looked at me, says, Peter, when you get into the Hall of Fame, you better not talk that long. <laughs> and I said, Leon, I wouldn't. Here I am, Leon. And I didn't bring a truckload of papers. I got a little bit. So anyhow, thank you to my good friend, Dennis, for those nice introduction. You know, Dennis has been a true friend for many years, helping me writing some songs, letting me perform with the Maestro's Men. And he's really a true, true friend. First off, Again, it's a great honor to be here. Congratulations to all my fellow inductees, all the music award winners, all well deserved. I would have never thought of this day when I started 53 years ago in radio when I was still a student at the University of Connecticut. Thanks to my parents, Peter and Ruth, for introducing me to polka music because every Sunday, my father would take my mother for a Sunday drive, and all we did was listen to polka music in the car the whole day. And that's how I got my love for polka music. To the late Brad Harris, who is the program director of my hometown station, WADS, for hiring me when I was a student at the University of Connecticut to work on Sundays, and where I got to work with Victor and Sophie Zembruski on their longtime Polish Eagle radio show in Connecticut. In fact, shortly after I started, Sophie had had an operation, and Victor already had a stroke, and he couldn't speak. I had to do the show right away. So that's how, right away I was jumped into doing a polka radio show. And then a few years later, my good friend Dick Yash. Yeah, a lot of you remember Dick Yash. My gosh, it's Yash. And we teamed up together for his polka carousel show. And we also teamed up doing live broadcasts at the New England Polka Festival, which was held in my hometown. So Dick, thank you for helping me with polka music. After Dick, we started my own polka celebration shows. They were heard on my hometown station, WADS, WWCO, WDJZ, WNTY, WNHU-FM from the University of New Haven, and WICC from Bridgeport, Connecticut, which went, went all over New England and in, in New York. And in fact, WICC paid me to do the show. <laughs> that was one of the first, a polka DJ getting paid to do a show on AM radio. A big thank you to all those involved with those stations. To Ray Zolokar of 247 Polka Heaven, and to the Polka Jammer Network for how many years being on there. Of course, through my radio shows, I had the privilege of becoming friends with some of the greats. I used to visit Frank Vodorowski in the convalescent home, and we used to talk, but of course, you know, Frank was a little well gone, so he would never say anything about, he would go around telling the staff, these are my lawyers, me and this other guy who was there. And, uh, but it was always great to take Frank outside just to give him some fresh air. Of course, Gene Wyshneski, as Dennis mentioned, we brought back his big band sound. And uh, Uncle Walt Solick. I called him Uncle because he called me nephew. And I can't tell you the many dinners we had and the stories Walt told me. I tell you, if I could spend a lot of time, I could tell you. But uh, Walter had some of the best stories. That's why he was the clown prince of polka music. And of course, there's Maestro Ray, Ray Henry, who I became very close with. We would talk many times at his band breaks. He would call me in the break, kid, come over here, sit down, we have a drink, and he would tell me all about polka music. Uh, and, you know, and that's why he even came on my radio show. It was the first time in 20 years that he allowed himself to come on a radio show to be interviewed. It was just a great pr privilege to be with uh, Ray. And that's why I was able to get the ballroom polka as the state polka, I'm so proud of that. Now what about, can I say about my late friend, another Polka Hall of Famer, Rich Bobinski? What a character he was. He would call me up at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, to talk about polkas. He said, Rich, it's one o'clock in the morning. I don't care, you gotta talk. And we talked, and then that's the way he was. He was the first to let me record with his band on a vocal called Skinny Mini. Of course, that's Skinny Mini, it wasn't, wasn't me, that's for sure. It was a great pleasure, of course, to know Eddie Blazonczyk Sr. 
In fact, at a pillar poke abrasion one time, calls me into the bar, Peter, sit down, put $50 on the bar. I looked at, what are you talking about, put $50 on? Put $50 on the bar. So I put $50 on the bar. He himself put $50 on the bar. I said, well, what are we gonna do now? He says, anybody who comes by is gonna have a drink. Come on, have a drink. And that's the way Eddie was, so that's my, but at that time, the $100 probably bought 100 drinks almost <laughs> that many years ago. And uh, thank you to Dick Piller, who made me an elector of the IPA, and also let me MC some of his Pillar Poke abrasions. Jan Levon, he hired me as his MC. I was his MC for many years at the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. And uh, I'm talking about five, 6,000 people. Mike Matusik and the boys. They gave me the nickname, the Grand Pooh Bar. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Goes way back. In fact, I still have the jacket they presented me when they called me the Grand Pooh Bar. Jimmy Stir, what can I say about a good friend? We have many dinners. We still go out to dinner many, many times and good talks about polka music. To the late Leon Kozicki again, former President Dave Uletsky, who I deeply loved. He was a great, great friend. And the past and current officers of the IPA, for all their knowledge and help, they do such a great job, those in the past and those right now. Super, so modernized now, so proud of the IPA. It's, 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 it's in the world now, it's in the technology world and we're here and, the, and the, they keep going. To Marge, the late Marge Mahai, and to Tish Blazoncek, because some 20 something years ago, I was at the first convention, my IPA, and elections were being held, and the Sergeant of Arms election came up. I think they went through like four people. Nobody said, no, no, no. Finally, Tish and Marge turned to me. Hey, you, how about you? And I said, okay. And that's how I got started as being an officer for a long time in the IPA. A special thanks to my good friend, a true friend, Ernie Dago, and my co-chair of the IPA Hall of Fame dance now in Ludlow. And we look forward to seeing you next year because we got the Crew Brothers reunion. It's gonna be a great time. To my sister Karen, who unfortunately couldn't be here uh, due to her being hard to walk, but thank you for your love of pokers and the love of your brother. To my kids, Conrad, his wife Eva, and my grandchildren Marisha and Zosha in Poland. Many of you who know me on Facebook, you see my 17-year-old Marisha, what a beautiful voice she has. You listen to her, she has a great, great voice. To my other son, his wife, they're actually here today. My son Peter, his wife Agnieszka, and my two beautiful grandchildren, Nicole and Casper. Thank you for being here, we love you. Of course, you know, this past Thursday was my wife Regina's birthday, but it was also our wedding anniversary, 18 years. And for 18 years, she has put up plenty with my love for polkas, believe me. Thank you for understanding how important polkas have been to my life. I know at times it's been tough, but I love you very much. And I'm sure I missed many, many others, and there is many, many others I could thank who have influenced my love for polka music. But most of all, thank you to all the polka fans out there that have made it a pleasure for me to entertain all of you. This is how I close my radio shows all the time, and that's how I'm gonna to close today. Thank you, take care, stay safe, and God bless. And remember, we are all one family, all one big polka family. God bless Poland, and God bless America! Amen.